In this update, we've got a strange weather pattern setting up over the next seven days as storm systems tend to train over the same area. So let's talk about the details going forward. And let's start off with the big picture on the satellite view this morning. You can actually see we've got an area of low pressure that's basically stalled off the coast of the southeast. That's bringing some showers and thunderstorms and really elevating the shower activity down there in Florida. At the same time, we've had persistent mesoscale systems that went through Texas yesterday, and that's dying off this morning. But yet there's another complex that's already kind of reforming up there in Idaho, and that's going to be traveling from the northwest down to the southeast and a persistent southwest flow. And we're going to be seeing these storm systems kind of really relentless over the next coming days. So let's break down the details of what happened yesterday. Here's the overall rain picture. You can actually see the stalled frontal boundary down there in Florida that dropped all the significant rain for them. Some of these places, some isolated areas got five, six, almost seven inches of rainfall yesterday in portions of the Panhandle and southern portions of Georgia back in her Alabama. But here's the storm system that traversed off the Northwest flow. They have Severe storms that blew up over the Texas Panhandle. They even had some golf ball size hail, even some tennis ball size hail down there up towards uh, uh, Parrington, Texas. And that traveled southeast, leaving a good one to two inches across uh, West Texas. And we kind of find ourselves in the same kind of similar pattern today. So we're going to be finding ourselves kind of blow up in the heat of the afternoon right along this boundary. So these can be significant again. So places like into Amarillo, back into the Lubbock region, back here into Midland, San Angelo, into Abilene, those areas are under the gun, could be a potential to see, again, some of that golf ball to tennis ball size hail as another pretty significant mesoscale convective system forming into the Texas Panhandle is going to be diving southeastward into the evening time frame leaving some very heavy rain and some large hail in its wake and that's going to be weakening as we continue with gusty winds deeper into the evening time frame so in the big picture here's the overall setup so we've got these storm systems that come up in portions of idaho with some heavier rains those travel down the nor northwest flow down to the southeast we have also another boundary that sets up shop across the texas panhandle that's going to bring the you know significant severe storms for the panhandle into west texas and then again we've got that stalled frontal boundary down here into florida and a lot of the same areas that got rain yesterday are going to get in inundated with the you know heavier rain showers later on this afternoon into the early evening time frame while the rest of the country is pretty much kind of high and dry we do have a fairly decent cold shot that's actually going to be coming in for the northeast but on wednesday yeah same deal folks we've got storm systems that blow up essentially east of the rockies those are going to be elevated probably probably slight risk at least for severe storms again probably on wednesday as it's going to get upgraded east of the rockies end of the texas panhandle traveling down from the northwest to the southeast with some larger hail gustier wind producers and then as they get deeper into the nighttime hours these will tend to weaken so on the big picture kind of see the details right the placement of the mesoscale sh system shifts kind of on a daily basis so it depends on where the northwest flow aloft is this particular setup looks to appear just a little bit further north so now the origination point is in the Texas Panhandle, but these may shift a little bit further into Oklahoma and more into North Texas and feed into Central Texas while we still have the boundary that's still setting up over Florida. They call this the rainy season because you typically get these cold shots in May that tend to fizzle out and where they fizzle out is right over Florida and they tend to stall out and once the atmosphere you know kind of heats up and bubbles up in the afternoon time frame that just sets the stage for these isolated pop-up showers and thunderstorms and then the sun time you know sun goes down and then that you lose the daytime heating and they kind of tend to fade off but look to the north that's that cold front we talked about that's going to be moving into the northeast still dry air there's not much rain to speak of with this front with the exception of portions of Vermont, New Hampshire, and back into Maine, those could be like of a, a chillier rain. Let me talk about this rainfall totals over the next 48 hours, because it's not much for the Northeast, but the only game in town up here is gonna be into Vermont, 
you know, back in New Hampshire and back into portions of Maine, those areas could get some chillier rain. I'm talking rain showers in the 50s, if not in the 40s up there in Maine. But for the rest of the country further south, you've got that high pressure and that's a lot of sinking air. But you really only have the instability across where these low pressure areas are and the stalled frontal boundary down there in Florida. And then there's the northwest flow. It's pretty evident, right? So you got the storm systems that blow up over portions of Idaho, and then they travel from the northwest down to the southeast, through the Rockies, through the Texas Panhandle, back into portions of West Texas, and those feed into Central Texas, and those fade over time, losing the instability, losing the severe risk. As they as they collapse, they have some strong gusty downburst winds. And then they tend to just fizzle out as you get deeper into the morning's time frame. And it's a rinse and repeat as it, you know, going into the next day. So here's the wind shift wind over the next 48 hours where the most significant winds will be is right along that northwest flow. So these tend to have some pretty strong downburst winds to them. Could be some microburst winds to them as well, especially when they start to collapse that air rushes down to the surface and those could get a good burst of wind. So definitely be on high alert for, you know, secure loose objects down here in portions of the Panhandle and, and far west Texas as storms are really gusty into the overnight time frame. And so as we move forward going into Thursday, right? So it, kind of the same deal. It's going to sound like a broken record, guys. We got storm systems east of the Rockies down further south mesoscale system placement a little bit different this time now it shifts a little bit further south so places in new mexico might get some severe storms and then far far west texas we're talking places like into lubbock likely into the midland region these are areas obviously desperately need the rain after they've been so dry for so long and that's a huge change this is a very unique pattern change that's definitely on the table that's pretty persistent so Again, you've got that stalled frontal boundary. This is Thursday's stalled frontal boundary down into Florida with, you know, more isolated rain showers in the heat of the day. There's that fairly significant cold front back behind the cold front. You got another high pressure, right? Just high and dry, a lot of sinking air, not much rain to squeeze out of that atmosphere. Completely the opposite on the Northwest flow. You got plenty of plenty of fuel coming in off the southwest flow of the pacific with that active more subtropical jet stream and then that feeds and fuels these thunderstorms and as this northwest flow and creates that mid-level lift boom you've got those showers and thunderstorms to overturn the atmosphere then you have you know portions into kansas back into western oklahoma back into the texas panhandle again again gets inundated with heavier rain so Here's the setup for high temperatures on Thursday. I told you it's going to be a pretty significant cool shot for the end of May standards. Those are 60s for highs, folks, in Illinois and Ohio, back into Pennsylvania. And then you start getting into the 50s in portions of upstate New York. And there you go. There are some 40s showing up on the map for high temperatures. That's 4 o'clock in the afternoon, folks. And you're talking in the 40s with the chilly rain falling. That's going to feel pretty chilly up there in Maine. But it's not really that hot for even in the rest of the country, right? Even further south in the southeast and a good part of the southern uh, southern plains, 80s for this time of year is technically just almost pretty much average. So it's not much heat, heat in town. The only heat is as well to the north where you're definitely above average when you're pointing at 85 degrees for Dakota or North Dakota there. But at the same time, again, even in the desert southwest, you're only in the low 90s. So there's not really much like heat domes building anytime soon. The, the above average temperature anomalies are actually into Canada. That's where you're going to be seeing the most significant above average temperatures. So heading into your Friday time frame, again, we look at that low pressure. It's just not going anywhere, folks. The main rain is still offshore. It's still kind of offshore. So this is Tuesday. This is a map on Friday. So this, you're talking four days from now. It's still basically in the same place. It really hasn't gone anywhere with these just really light steering currents aloft. And you got the high pressure to the north kind of blocking it. So you got a, a, a gradient here 
that just kind of block in this area. So they just kind of sits and spins. And then this high pressure just kind of sits and spins and they're just, they're just won't you let, won't you let each other move, right? And so you just get rainfall over the same areas and it doesn't allow to move anywhere. And kind of the same deal up in the Northwest. You've got this, you know, the system coming in from the West Coast, a little bit, you know, cooler, cooler, drier air. You've got the South wind, the Southwest flow, Northwest flow to the top, and then that overturns the atmosphere in the middle of the country, especially where the dew points rise all the way in the 60s to the Canadian border. That's pretty significant. And here's the setup by Saturday. So by Saturday, you finally could squeeze out the, sh the ridge shifts a little bit further off to the west. That allows an open door to swing this low pressure center finally inland. So areas along the coast into South Carolina and the North Carolina would probably likely get some heavier rain. And that's a chilly rain, folks, as this low pressure has got its own cold core system to it. On top of the dynamic cooling, dragging down that colder air from the higher levels and then dropping it on the surface. That's a chilly rain, folks, as this low pressure center finally moves inland. You're going to be seeing well below average temperatures especially along the coast on the day on on uh, uh saturday time frame but yeah again, underneath that all that brown that's just high high pressure that's dry air very dry air not much rain to speak up up here where the cool where the uh, storm systems are again in the middle of the country right in the middle of the country with the evident persistent northwest flow and the same deal that you know on the on the uh, satellite picture you can actually see this better where the action will finally move inland over South Carolina, over North Carolina, back into Virginia. And then you got that Northwest flow again, kind of shifts a little bit, likely be a little bit further North, maybe end up maybe into uh, the weekend for your starting in your Memorial weekend, have your rains over portions of Oklahoma and parts of uh, Kansas. And then the shifts kind of the same deal, right? Even with this low pressure center, finally moving inland it's still got that high blocking to the north so it's still not going to go further north and it's still closer to the coast where it draws in that tropical juice and it just feeds that system so it's just kind of persistent in a lot of these same areas and then you have the persistent flow coming in off the gulf and then boom the higher dew points the higher dew points the activities attracted to that more moist atmosphere and that's where the shower and thunderstorms are going to be lighting up right along this region. And you can kind of see on Sunday, that's the setup where you got the ridge over the top. You have the most highest, most significant anomalies above average up in Canada with the uh, high and dry conditions for them. And then underneath that, that's where the ridge is on our northern tier states, Pacific Northwest, North Central states, up into the Great Lakes and back here into the Northeast under that high ridge of high pressure further south you've got more cloud cover you've got more instability you've got the southwest flow you've got the active subtropical jet that puts this area likely below average and likely in this area you know putting into you know more probabilities for you know precipitation opportunities and again you can see the same thing going in on Monday, folks. This is Memorial Day, and you still got that low pressure kind of over the southeast. It just slowly drifts finally inland, but it's not allowed to go north because it's that high pressure. So it's going to gravitate where the moisture is, and that's closer to the coast. So it's going to be, you know, pushing inland, but it's still going to be there ringing out that shower and thunderstorm activity and still in the middle of the country. You still got that persistent northwest flow and that funnel end with the increased water vapor coming in off the gulf and yeah there's your temperature anomalies as you head into tuesday to close out getting into the end of may here well above average temperatures especially in in and in up into canada and then you got the well above average temperatures in our northern branch but the southern branch tends to be a little bit more average or even you know below average depending on the rain where that will be on the, on that time frame but again if you even go to the extended view we're still under that same type setup from the 30th to the third your highest precipitation anomalies are in this area that had been in a drought for so long so this is a completely different setup what we've seen for 
really three years, this triple dip La Nina. Now it's almost completely the opposite where these areas were just begging for rain. And now it seems like it's not going to stop, <laughs> right? As we got essential systems just training over the same areas for a persistent period of time. And that over time, obviously, will start eating away at these a lot of these drought prick strewn, you know, areas that have been just so persistent over the last three years and here's the breakdown on the temperature anomalies right you got the highest temperature anomalies up here in canada and our northern states where you got the southern boundary is tend to be a little bit average or even slightly below average so it's still going to feel fairly nice going into the end of may as that you know, more the southern subtropical jet stream stays alive and active and there's your rain opportunities for the next seven days. So, you know, where that low pressure center just sits there and spins for like five days, the highest precipitation is going to be out in the open waters instead of Florida. It's, you get the Florida system because that's draped across uh, in that stalled frontal boundary. But further inland, that finally moves into the Carolina coast with those heavier rain showers finally by this weekend. But notice where it's pretty much high and dry up here in the Ohio Valley in a good part of Kentucky back into Tennessee there's not much rain to speak of and you got these dry slots again you have another dry slot out in California the desert southwest the persistent not so dry spot is is the northwest flow you got systems that blow up over Idaho blow up over Montana and then they travel south southeast primarily east of the Rockies and the middle of the country gets all the heavier rain and a lot of the same areas really going forward to close out May. So I guys, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do hit the subscribe button on this video and catch the next update. Why I protect you before and after the storm.